Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how we can represent a sequential game in normal form. So I'm going to work with this game here. This is a sequential game in extensive form. We sometimes call this a game tree. And I just want to say in general, when we work with games that are in extensive form, we can see quite clearly from the form of the game, well, we can see the players in the game, when each player moves, the actions or moves that are available to each player. We can discern from the game what each player knows at what point. And we can also see the payoffs associated with each possible outcome. So our tree here is telling us that we have player one, P1, who moves first. They can either play high or low. And player two, P2, who sees player one's move. And they can respond by either playing up or down. Now the payoffs associated with each possible outcome are down the bottom at what we call the terminal nodes with player one's payoff listed first and then player two's. Now in contrast, if we have a normal form representation of a game, it's most often achieved by drawing a table. Well, this form will describe the players of the game, the strategies available to each player, and the payoffs associated with each possible outcome. So if we compare our two forms, really the tricky thing about moving from extensive form to normal form is that the strategies of our players is not obviously reported to us when we have a game tree or when we have extensive form. But we need our strategies in order to put our game in normal form. So the first thing I'm going to think about then is how we can find our players' strategies from an extensive form representation. Now, in game theory, a player's strategy, very broadly speaking, is a plan of action for the game. So it will describe what the player will do in the game. But this plan does need to be a comprehensive one. So in our situation, when we have an extensive form, and in particular, a sequential game in extensive form, our player strategies will need to describe what each player will do in the game for each possible situation that they could find themselves in. So our strategies need to cover all contingencies. All right, well then for our game for player one, well, player one can either play high or low. And that's really it for player one in terms of their possible strategies. They don't find themselves in any other situations. They're not responding to anyone. So that's it for player one. They have two strategies. Player two is a little bit more complex since they are responding to player one and player one might play high or they might play low. So whilst player two does have only two possible moves, they can play either up or down. They will actually have four strategies in total because any one single strategy will describe what the plan of action is for them, both if player one goes high and also if they play low. So for instance, well, we could say, you look, player two can play up if player one plays high. But this statement as it is it will not be a strategy because we also need to describe what player two will do if player one plays low. So we can add, maybe we say player two could also play up if player one plays low. And so these two statements here, they count as one strategy for player two. I'm going to nickname that strategy up, up. So I'll notate that U, U, up if player one plays high and up if player one plays low. And this strategy clearly tells us player two's plan of action for each possible situation that they could find themselves in. All right, well, another possible strategy for player two then would be well, they could play up if player one plays high, but down if player one plays low. And again, these two statements count as a strategy because it tells us player two's plan of action for each possible state that player two could find themselves in. So I'm going to notate this strategy UD. Player two plays up if player one plays high and down if player one plays low. Okay, great. Well, another possible strategy then would be, well, player two could play down if they see that player one plays high and down if they see that player one plays low. 
So I will notate this strategy as DD, down if player one plays high and down if player one plays low. And lastly, player one could adopt the strategy that they will play down if they see player one plays high and up if they see player one plays low. So I'll notate this as DU, player two plays down if player one plays high and up if player one plays low. So these are the four strategies of player two. UU, UD, DD, and DU. And we also have those two strategies there for player one. All right, so now we have our strategies then, we can put this game into normal form. So I've made a table and I've included two rows that will correspond to player one's two possible strategies, high and low. And I'm going to include four columns in the table that will correspond to player two's possible strategies. U, 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 D, 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 and D, U. All right, well, the last thing to do then is to think about the payoffs. And what I will do is I will outline on the game tree what's going on in orange, and that will be a visual aid for you to see what's going on here. And so, well, let's think about then if player one plays high and player two plays U, U. So up if high and up if low. All right, well, if that happens, then our outcome will be at this terminal node here. Player one has played high, and player two's strategy is to respond to high by playing up. So the payoffs are 410. All right, well, if player one plays high, and player two plays up if high and down if low, well, actually, the outcome will be, again, at this same terminal node that we had before. Player one has played high, and from player two's strategy, we know they will respond to player one playing high by playing up. So the payoffs again are 410. All right, well, if player one plays high and player two plays down if high and down if low, we know that, well, our outcome will actually be at this terminal node now here. Player one has played high, and player two's strategy is to respond to a play of high by playing down. So the payoffs at 8, 12. Lastly, if player one plays high and player two plays down if high and up if low, then our outcome will be again at this same terminal node. Player one has played high and player two's strategy is to respond to high by playing down. So the payoffs are again 8, 12. All right, let's think about the next row of our table. So let's think about if player one plays low and let's think about the first cell. So player two is playing up, up, up if high and up if low. Well, we know then that actually they will end up here. Player one has played low and player two's strategy is to respond to low by playing up. So our payoffs are here, two, zero. All right, well, if player one plays low and player two plays UD, so up if high, down if low, well, then player one's playing low, so player two will respond by playing down. So they will be here. At this terminal node, the payoffs are three, six. All right, if player one plays low and if player two plays down if high and down if low, then we know that player two will respond to player one playing low by playing down, so our payoffs are here, three, six. Lastly, if player one plays low, and if player two plays down if high and up if low, then we know that player two is going to respond to player one playing low by playing up, so the payoffs are here, two, zero. And there we have it, that's our normal form representation of our sequential game that was in extensive form. I hope that this video has helped. If it has, please like and subscribe to my channel. You can also comment below, especially if you have any questions, and you can also visit my website for more resources to help with your study. That's www.econhelp.com.au. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good one.